please welcome Tony van der Wart, Shattered Illusion. Tony van der Wart. Mr. Toastmaster, gentlemen, life is one great illusion. From the day our parents instilled their beliefs into us as infants, right up to the, to the point when we die and take what's left of our illusions to the grave with us. Now, typical of the illusions that we cherish very dearly are that we are the smartest chaps we know, are citizens of the finest country in the world, are practitioners of the most important profession in the world, etc., etc., etc. We get no drift. Now, the sad part of it is that maturity, right up <coughs> to senior citizen level, consists of the progressive shattering of our illusions and acceptance of the fact that, however smart we might think we are, we are regularly upstaged and outsmarted by our wives. That our nation will not win the soccer, rugby and cricket World Cups all in one year, let alone the maths Olympiad ever. And that however important our profession might be, we still have to rely on other professions like the dentist, the motor mechanic, the plumber and all the rest. Our growing maturity, which I assure you lies right and continues right up to our senior years, Thus consists of a long succession of illusions shattering around us every day, right up to the end of our lives, right after another. I'll venture now to give the opinion that the most important illusion to shatter in our lives is the very first one, for the reason that apart from the loss that it conveys in our lives, it also points out to us that there's got to be a whole lot of other things out there waiting to reveal themselves to us as not true. Usually at a very vulnerable point in our lives. So gentlemen, with that said, here it is. The first great illusion of my life to be shattered. Leaving me with the biggest void in my life up to that stage. <coughs> Namely, <coughs> me, namely, the indisputable fact that Father Christmas does not exist. <laughs> <laughs> Let me give you the sad details of that great letter down in my life. My parents, sisters and I, were visiting my grandparents in the village of Donnybrook, Natal, for the Christmas holidays. <coughs> the local community, about a week before the celebration of the Yuletide celebration, threw a Christmas tree for the children of the village and the district in the village hall. My sisters and I, were, of course, were invited, even though we were only visitors to the village. Now, unbeknownst to me, my father had been persuaded to put on a red cloak, wear a long white beard, and play the role of Father Christmas, because he was not known to the local children. Makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? Of course, Santa could not arrive outside the hall on a sleigh pulled by a team of reindeer. He thus arrived on a donkey cart. Rather strange, but you remember I'm talking about 75 years ago. <laughs> now, on arrival at the hall, door, to our very great excitement, Santa got off the donkey cart and strode into the hall <coughs> to our very great excitement. The bags of presents were unloaded from the donkey cart and carried into the hall by a couple of helpers. Then the proceedings got underway. A rather overweight lady dressed up as a fairy called out the names of the kids who then went up to Father Christmas to receive their gifts. I received my parcel, opened it and was very happy with the contents, I must say. I went to show it to my mother, show it what Father Christmas gave me. And then I asked, but where's Dad? I want to show him too. But nowhere was Dad to be found. I was very puzzled by this. By then, Father Christmas had finished dishing out the presents to the kids, so I went up to take a closer look at this great personage who was gracing us with his presents. I looked at him from the front, 
and from the side in profile. <coughs> then I tell you, Father Christmas, you look like my dad, but I know you're not. <laughs> now, gentlemen, I'm going to interpose here to say I'm going to have to break this code, today's code of political correctness, because what I said then was acceptable 75 years ago, and it is relevant to my story. I've said, Father Christmas, you look like my dad, but I know you're not, because you have a Jewish nose, and he hasn't. <laughs> <laughs> I noted that Father Christmas laugh if it was like that of my dad, but it was that nose that convinced me to spell any thought that they were one and the same now. Well, some months later, Dad and I were travelling together in a bus. I looked up at his profile against the light. And what did I observe there that I never see before in my life? <laughs> Dad, you've got a Jewish nose. <laughs> you were Father Christmas. <laughs> and now I know he isn't real. And there crashed my fond illusion of Santa Claus <coughs> in my life. Well, next to crash at age six is a tooth fairy. I woke up in the night and caught my mother with her hand in the receptacle where I put my front tooth in the chocolate <laughs> for the fairy. She took the tooth and the chocolate and left a shilling and a little note ostensibly from the tooth fairy to thank me for my tooth and the chocolates. Oh well, at least there was the Easter Bunny to fall. <laughs> he could be relied on through thick and thin. Until the morning when I spotted my Aunt Deirdre hiding Easter eggs in the front garden. Now hang it all, that is supposed to have been done by the tooth fairy. I mean by the Easter Bunny. <laughs> <laughs> so gentlemen, there you have it. The ongoing saga of the, what all of us experience, all of us lose, throughout our lives, losing one beautiful illusion after another. And it doesn't let up, no matter how old you get, until we are left with just one indisputable truth that no one can take from us. Namely, that we men are, always have been, and always will be, God's gift to womankind. Yes. <laughs>